So experiment 12 will be looking at enzyme chemistry. So the purpose of an enzyme is to lower the activation energy of a certain reaction. So here I have a reaction coordinate and I'm showing the activation energy without the enzyme and then the activation energy with the enzyme. Uh, if you notice, this is the exact same graph I had on the board when I talked about catalysts. That's because enzymes are catalysts. The reactions that happen in your body uh, that use enzymes, those normally wouldn't occur at body temperature. Usually the temperature would have to be a much higher. So you, you normally need a lot more energy to start some of the reactions that happen in your body. But because of enzymes lowering the activation energy, it actually allows some reactions to happen in your body without that high energy, high temperature requirement. So a little bit about the nature of enzymes. Uh, all enzymes are proteins. And if you look at proteins from a biophysicist's point of view, life really likes building with weak bonds. So what that means is that uh, proteins, they're, they're long strands. They're made, uh, and they're held together with really weak bonds. However, this does make proteins very sensitive to surrounding conditions. So, for example, I have here normal body temperature that's 37.0 degrees Celsius. And then on the cold end of that, hypothermia is 35 degrees Celsius. So if your internal core temperature drops to 35C or below, then you're considered hypothermic. And if, you're, uh, if your body temperature raises to 40C, that's uh, hyperthermia. So that means your body's too hot. So the body only really has a range of 5 degrees Celsius before it enters a life-threatening condition. Uh, another example is another example that shows the sensitivity of proteins is cooking eggs. So <clears throat> when you're cooking a Denver omelet, or if you're Chef John, a Western omelet, uh, you have to wilt the vegetables first before you add the eggs. Eggs are mostly protein, and so they denature it much more quickly than vegetables or other foods. Uh, this is why you can cook eggs on a sidewalk. Uh, even changing the pH of a solution can denature the protein. So even if you look this up, uh, cooking eggs with lemon juice, like that's actually a thing. The high acidity or the low pH of lemon juice can actually denature the egg protein. So So for this experiment, one of the proteins or enzymes we'll be looking at is catalase. Catalase, that will break down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. Normally, this would, this would happen over time. Anyways, uh, that's why hydrogen peroxide has an expiration date, because if you give it enough time, it will just naturally break down into water and oxygen. And it also would happen in the presence of light, but that's why they sell hydrogen peroxide in brown bottles. But if you, uh, in the presence of catalase, this reaction happens a lot more quickly. And then during the procedure, you'll actually be able to see the oxygen forming as gas bubbles. Uh, and then the next enzyme we'll be looking at is amylase. Uh, amylase, that turns starch into sugar. So because we skipped the, uh, the carbohydrate lab, a little background about starches and sugars. So starches, those are long carbohydrate polymers, and they're made up of many individual sugar units. So it's just a long chain of individual sugar units. Uh, and then amylase breaks down the long chain into simple sugars, or into the uh, monomer parts. So for the iodine test that we're going to be using, uh, what the iodine test looks for the presence of starch. So if the iodine test changes color, that means there's starch there. Typically during lecture, I would drip some of the iodine solution onto a paper towel, because a paper towel is made of cellulose. That's a glucose polymer. It will actually go from like a golden amber color. It'll change to a dark black color as soon as it touches the paper towel. But if starch is present, that's also another uh, carbohydrate polymer. If starch is present,
we should see the gold amber iodine color that should turn into a dark solution. So when we do this test, uh, what our hopes is is that our amylase will break down all of the starch and we won't see that color change. The iodine should stay the same color. It should stay the same gold amber color because the amylase broke down all the starch and only simple sugars remains. So simple sugars, those should not change the color of iodine. So we shouldn't see a dark color if the sugar solution worked properly. And then for the last part, oh, this is the wrong sheet. So for the last part, so for the last part, uh, I want to talk about how enzymes are specific to their substrates. So this mostly comes from the reading in the notebook, but they emphasize that the enzymes they only work on one substrate. So catalase that will only work on hydrogen peroxide. It won't work on any other substrate or any other substance, for a better word. Uh, so catalase will only do its job when it comes in contact with hydrogen peroxide. And same thing with amylase. The substrate for amylase is starch. Amylase will only do its job if it comes into contact with starch. Uh, there are some exceptions, but it seems like for the un to understand the reading, they want you to know that specific enzymes only work with specific substrates.